Mm -hmm. I, I would just want to, uh, uh, and I, well, we're going to talk about whether it goes into the, the, the record. I, I, I asked, and this is not my information, this is from USDA, International Trade Administration, um, and um, U.S. Census Bureau information. And this is, I, I'll give you this, state, California, NAFTA's trade, uh, ag exports lag, ag imports surge, ag trade balance suffers. North Carolina, um, uh, uh, net exports of vegetable products fall. Texas, um, uh, overall, ag imports surge, ag exports fall. Uh, there's, this is all detailed, and they're not my numbers. I don't make them up. They come from all of you. They come, as I say, International Trade Administration, the U.S. Census Bureau. Um, uh, uh, Washington State, uh, net exports of vegetable products fall. Um, Oregon, uh, ag exports lag behind, ag balance suffers. Nebraska, ag exports surge, ag exports fall, ag balance suffers. Very detailed, very, very detailed information. This is Mississippi, Minnesota, uh, Illinois, down the line of Delaware. Data that comes from the organizations that compile this effort to take a look at what is happening with these free trade agreements and our ag imports, exports, all we talk about are exports. No one deals in the reality of imports and what that is doing to agriculture, what it's doing to manufacturing or anywhere else. And I read your testimony and God's in his heaven all's right with the world. And this trade agreement with 12 countries is going to make a big difference than those that we've had with bilateral or whether we've had two countries. How do you justify in the face of all the data that you produce that this Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement is going to increase agriculture products around the globe and be good, be good for American farmers and, the, and, and, and American families. How do you justify it? And I would say, um, first of all, when you, when you look at a, a picture, we're going to have 9 billion people on this planet by 2050, and there's going to be rules of the road of trade written somewhere. We need to be engaged in that process of writing those rules. Don't and talk to me about China. Don't talk to me about China because if you wanted to deal with China and the rules of the road, then this agreement would have a currency chapter that deals with currency manipulation because, quite frankly, that is the biggest issue that is on the table in lowering, uh, 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 losing jobs and depressing wages. So don't go down that road as every agency that comes before us, as the secretary when he came before us, talked about China writing the rules of the road. Yes, we should be involved. We all support trade. Don't put us in a basket that said you're a Luddite or you don't understand. But the current practice in our trade agreements have been nothing but a detriment to American workers, American manufacturers, and yes, I would say to American farmers. The, 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 the data is yours. It's not mine. I don't make it up. So let's come up with a new trade paradigm that ensures that American workers, American farmers, come out the winners and can participate in the global market on that basis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Oh.